The Reno Sparks, Nevada area is poised to lose this historic 120-year-old railroad building to the wrecking ball. If you're a, a local here, you probably passed this scene on Interstate 80 many times next to the Sparks Nugget Hotel Casino, and you, you might not know the backstory of what this old building is or was. Here in the, the state of Nevada, we do tend to have a pattern of tearing down old stuff and building new stuff. And also here in northern Nevada, we have a pattern of, of tearing down old stuff and not putting anything in its place, the Mapes Hotel. So I thought on this edition of the Reno You Know, we'd, we'd look at this old antique, this, this dead building walking, which is actually the last physical reminder of how important Reno's neighbor Sparks Nevada is to the legacy of railroads in the West. And you can probably see my breath in the video. It's, it's cold out here this morning. News started to trickle down in the media this past summer that this amazing old building might be torn down. This old machine shop and the adjacent erecting shop are sitting on top of land that, are, that is leased from the Union Pacific and the buildings themselves are owned by a private entity. The railroad would like to reclaim the use of this land for parking and storage for their operation and they claim that the owner of this building is in violation of the terms of the lease uh, because he was subletting the building to various businesses. This irreplaceable structure was built here in 1903. 1903 by the Southern Pacific. The railroad center of these operations prior to 1903 was located in Wadsworth, Nevada, about 30 miles east. Around this time, the Southern Pacific acquired the Central Pacific, and the decision was made to relocate the entire yard operation to what was to be the new town of Sparks, Nevada, just a mile or so east of Reno. This move was also prompted by the availability of more water closer to Reno, as well as the effects of a devastating fire in Wadsworth some years prior. The town of Sparks was founded to be the home of the railroad yards here and was named for the then sitting governor, John Sparks. The railroad moved everything. They moved the buildings, including a 21 stall roundhouse, they dug up the trees, they moved the shrubs, they moved the people, the dogs and cats. They, they put everything on flat cars and rolled them 30 miles west to this location where they would reestablish the train yard. And to sweeten the deal for those contemplating the move, they uh, offered lots for sale for homes for $1. Back in 1903, this was a marshy and wet area and the Donner Party and other emigrants that came through the Truckee Meadows in years prior would avoid this area by skirting it to the south. The Southern Pacific uh, spent a year filling in the marshes to accommodate the new rail yard and the new town, and it took 65,000 freight cars full of rocks and gravel to raise the elevation up here 18 inches. Even the Nugget Hotel Casino behind me sits on that fill from 120 years ago. The railroad was a huge deal here, and Sparks is still known to this day as the Rail City. The city grew up with the railroad, and almost every early resident had some connection to the rail yards. The mascot of Sparks High School today is still the railroaders. They even have an old railroad car next to their football field. There's a Rail City Casino here. There's an old Southern Pacific steam engine and cars on loan from the Nevada State Railroad Museum in Carson City, and they are displayed downtown. Many street names here have a train or railroad related theme. And the Union Pacific, which took over the Southern Pacific in 1996, still operates a yard here to this day. The Union Pacific is a supremely historic name. Next time you see a UP train go by, know that it was created by an act of Congress in 1862 and approved by President Lincoln to be the railroad that would lay track west to Promontory Summit, Utah, to meet the Central Pacific coming east from Sacramento to become the first transcontinental railroad. So back to this building. This building was built as a machine shop, which was adjacent to the big roundhouse here, which was located uh, where the interchange of Interstate 80 and Pyramid Way now exists. This 40 stall roundhouse was the centerpiece of the Sparks Yards. And when it was constructed in 1904, this was the largest roundhouse west of the Mississippi River. 
And back in the day, they also promoted it as the world's largest roundhouse. It had a steam-powered turntable in the center that would direct an engine to a particular stall. And the length of this machine shop is 500 feet, which is just slightly longer than 1.5 football fields. And it's 150 feet wide, so it has 75,000 square feet of space. By the 1950s, the times, they were a change in, and the facilities here were becoming outdated. The roundhouse itself was dismantled in 1959, and other structures were taken down or condemned up until the, the 1970s when room needed to be made for the new Interstate 80, which today separates the old machine shop building from the actual town of Sparks. One of the buildings that remains is this old one. One of the original buildings moved here from Wadsworth in 1903, making it also at least 120 years old. The tower was added in 1952. All right, let's see if the friendly folks at the Sparks Heritage Museum can provide any illumination. Hey, last chance, Joe. Right, here we go. Tony Armstrong was the mayor back then, mm -hmm. and he had plans, he had this vision of changing these buildings on the opposite side, the side that would face us when we look at it, um, that that would be the entryway, and he wanted it to be like a cultural center and an event place and those kinds of things. And then that got, you know, thrown by the wayside. Anyway, so the struggle now is to keep it standing, you know, and and do the something because it's of historical significance. Right. If this is torn down. That's the last that remnants that we have of old sparks. Absolutely. Depiction of the round pack. Okay. Oh, look at that. All right. So this side faced it faced west right here the reason being because the wind and because otherwise if it faced this way if this was west all the wind would just blow in but so that would be west right there there's a picture of it right there so those so this is east and then that's west and you can see the little arrow up there it says we are here oh yeah yeah and um and then you could even see Here's the old engine, how it was, you know, with the smokestack in front and the engineer was in the little cab in the back, like this one here. And then they changed it to the cab forwards. Some fun facts about this building. It's constructed from miles of steel and approximately three million bricks, which were probably provided by the old Reno Press Brick Company. It had 11 repair lifts and a, a huge crane that could lift entire engines up in the air, up to 200 tons. And by 1944, approximately 1,400 people were working here. Uh, many people in the area have parents and grandparents and great-grandparents that worked here. And this building really represents the core of why the town of Sparks, Nevada even exists. After announcing its plans, the Union Pacific released a statement. This is unfortunate. The lease that Union Pacific executed with the owner of the building did not allow for the building to be subleased without Union Pacific's permission. We did not grant permission for the subleases. It continued, while we understand that some may be disappointed in our decision to terminate the lease of the land where the old railroad machine shop sits, our growing operations require additional space and sparks to help meet local and regional economic demand. Providence was with me during one of my filming visits here because up pulled a manager of one of the units in the building who was conducting a private tour for a couple of concerned citizens. This building is not open to the public. I got to see the entire interior of both the machine shop and the erecting shop next door. I didn't want to say a lot as, as we walked along because they were nice enough to let me tag along on the tour, and I didn't have much to say anyway because I was in complete awe of what I saw. Although the space is currently used for storage, it reminded me of the great cathedrals of Europe I went through so many years ago.
You can't replace this. This is irreplaceable. That's happened so many times in our community. It can't be replaced. Yeah. This is a piece of history. Totally. It's too valuable. I mean, you could do another tilt up concrete here or there, but it's not this. This is the effect of this space is it can't be replicated. And when it's gone, you're going to someday go, gosh, I wish we had a concert venue here in this town. And it's like, well, you just got rid of one. Right. Okay. I mean, can you imagine the sound that would just, to have a concert in here, to have a symphony, a rock concert, anything. It just, with this effect, it's like, wow. So where are we at as of the date of this filming, which is actually the last day of 2023? Uh, earlier this month, the Spark City Council passed a resolution in support of saving this historic structure. The UP has given the owner of the building until the end of May 2024 to have the building cleared out. So the clock is ticking and the city is hoping that a miracle occurs between now and then. The city's not in a position to purchase the building and it is hopeful that a, uh, some adjacent land can be used uh, to negotiate a land swap. If you'd like your voice to be heard, please reach out to Spark City Councilman Donald Abbott or write to the Union Pacific. I'll leave the address for both in the description of this video. All right, thanks for hanging out with me today, folks. I hope you learned a little bit about our railroad building situation, and I hope you're on board with me that I, I hope this does get preserved. Uh, you know, if, if an old building like that was in any other metropolitan area, they'd be all over redevelopment and repurposing, making, making it a symphony hall or uh, uh, shops or something like that. Um, here, we're, I, I can't believe we're having the actual conversation that they want to tear something like this down. Even if we don't have the, the means to, to develop it now, what, what, if, what if we do in 20 years? Well, sorry, 20 years ago we teared it down. So uh, uh, let's, let's keep old things like this around for future generations. I am finishing off today's episode at the Rail City Ale House here at the Rail City Casino and uh, also enjoying a Sparks made craft beer. Uh, by Great Basin, the uh, Ichthyosaur IPA. It's a, it's a local legend. Well, uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, ladies and gentlemen, please cl click that little subscribe button. It just lets you know when new episodes come out. It's free. And if you would also click that little like button, it uh, just tells the YouTube algorithm that you are here and it allows the video to be seen by more people. And until next time, as Harold S. Smith Sr. of Harold's Club always said, I'm with you. Cheers.